destruction and killing of so many of my district heads and villages, simply for cooperating with the government, identifying this Boko Haram, and by reporting to the appropriate authorities. So as soon as some of these Boko Harams were released, they were released, in fact, it's very unfortunate because it was in one of the national listing media where it said uh, police brutality, injustice, human rights, abuse, and all this. These Boko Haram were set free at that time. So they started identifying, telling that these are those, these are those people who led for arrest and all. So they started pointing out our district heads and village heads and followed village by village, town by town, house by houses. Then they started killing our district heads and village heads at that time. It was very unfortunate because I mean, so many of my traditional council members were killed, assassinated, gunned down by Boko Haram. Even I myself, I escaped from Saibom as soon as I was returning from the mosque, by the mosque. They attacked me, they couldn't succeed. So, so many things have happened to the people of Bobo. So, Alhamdulillah, but now things are changing gradually and we thank God for that. It seems we still need to dig more into the historical lane now, because in the past the Northern Emir wields a fanatical devotion from its followers, and also they wield a cult followership from its people. How did things get to the point of the radical youth attacking their leaders? That was a sacrilege in the past. We command very high respect from our people and the youth as well. When this civilian JTF was formed, the first thing was they mobilized themselves and came to my palace directly. By then, people are suggesting for dialogue and all this thing. The civilian JTF came in thousands and complained to me that they would never accept any negotiating or any compromise with Boko Haram. So the first person they brought the complaint was to me because they know they are leader and they have to take my words. They came here and I told them that they should exercise patience until I clear with the government. So you see how, how the emirs were respected. Our words are very important. All the emirs, northern emirs, they command very high respect from their, their subjects even now. You see, this Boko Haram, as I told you, we don't know them. They are not, uh, they are not indigenous of uh, Borno. They are not citizens of Nigeria. They are principal leaders, you see. And I have mentioned of Yusuf as well as Shekau. They are not from Borno. They are not Kanuri, you see. I'm Kanuri leader. You see, all the Kanuri must respect the, 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 the Shehu. But these people, they are not Kanuri. And we don't know where they came from, you see. So the question of respect by youth to their leaders. Still they respect us and they command our words. Anything I said is an authority for my people. Is this politically motivated? Well, honestly, I cannot say that because I came 2009 and these things started as far back as 2002 and it was brought from one of, our, uh, one of the sister states and brought, brought here. One of the sisters said it was not initiated here. We inherited. We, the, the problem was even brought to us from elsewhere. It was not started in my degree, you see. So I cannot say politically motivated, but I'm sure so many things have attributed to this. One, poverty, you see. Two, illiteracy, you see. Because most of the people here uh, in Northern Borno uh, are educationally backward compared to other sister states of the country, you see. And in terms of employment, most of our people are not employed, particularly youth. They have to be master's degrees in summer. Some of them have PhD, but no job. So all these things have been attributed to this. That's why I've been begging, I've been appealing to all levels of government, federal government, state government, uh, to assist our people. We have so many problems here in Borno. So many problems. Like look at it, go to another. We have 27 local governments in Borno. About 10 local governments are not enjoying national grid. 10 local governments. Some of local governments were created as far back as 1976, but they are not enjoying national grid. No roads, you see, no tar roads like Gamborungala. If you go to Gamborungala from Gamborungala to uh, Abadam, I'm mean, sorry, Kalabalge. Kalabalge is a local government headquarters, but no tar. But from here to Gamborungala, there is tar. But from Gamborungala to Kalabalge, no tar. And here also Abadam is a factory. That's no tar. These two local government headquarters, they are not connected with tar road. National grid, 10 local government has no national grid. This oil exploration project in the northern Borno, 
we were told that they, are, uh, they have oil and all this, and, and up to now nothing done about it. So also Chad Basin and Rural Development Authority here, you see, it's a planning project. Uh, it's a very fertile area. They have weeds, uh, they have rights, so, um, so many things, but these projects were abandoned. For obvious reasons, we don't know. That's why we have been appealing to all levels of government to assist. So we have so many things which a federal government did something about it. They will create job our, uh, opportunity to our team, but this thing is still dormant, so we are appealing to government. You talked about the neglect in Bono State in terms of development, but one wonders Bono State has illustrious sons and daughters at the high level of governance in top government hierarchy. So what are you doing to draw the attention, to pull the strings to meet most of these demands? To understanding they are doing their best. But you see, very good for you to ask me this question. You know, uh, in terms of federal government allocations, Bono is one of the backward states. We cannot compare ourselves in terms of allocation, federal government allocation with sister states. Some of the sister states where they have oil, they are very buoyant in their allocations. But in our, in our own case, we don't have oil, you see. Our revenue cannot be compared, or our allocation, statutory allocation, cannot be compared with other sister states of the country. Uh, so we used to contain ourselves with the media resources we, we have. So the boys are trying, our people there at the federal government level, state, and all this, they have been trying. You see, but some of, some of this is, is about their capability. There's no way now our sons and daughters can take care of the IDPs over two million now, unless federal government assists, federal government has to come in, although they have been doing it. So the, uh, the, our people at the federal government, they are trying, and we appreciate what they have been doing. We know we have sons and daughters at the federal government, state government, you see, working, and we really appreciate with what they have been doing. You may also join in this conversation by sending us your comments on our various social media platforms showing on your screen. Coming up on Question Time. Setting the record straight on rebuilding the Northeast. Find out from the Shehu of Bono, Alahaji Abubakar Umar El Kanemi. Join us again.